Monday, and the sun rises on the second day of a holiday where nothing is quite as it seems. The pool will be the venue for this morning's first experiment to test people's attitudes to full frontal nudity. Guests from four nations are being monitored over four consecutive weeks to compare how they react to a series of staged incidents. This morning, the male undercover actors will strip off and shower naked by the pool. From a secret bunker in a hotel storeroom, the covert crew monitors the hidden cameras. They wait for the actor to move into position. The British are renowned for being awkward with nudity. So how will they react when Dave drops his trunks? Oh my God. There's no sign of prudishness. Some people even reposition themselves to get a better look. <laughs> the stereotype suggests Germans will have a much more relaxed attitude to nudity. This lack of concern is confirmed by the German actor Christian. Would you feel uncomfortable being naked in front of this group? No. I mean, would it be the kind of thing you'd do? Not normally. Not with this group normally, no. For a man to reveal all to such a cross-section of Japanese society is likely to cause offence. So this will not be easy for Keiichi. But Keiichi is a true samurai. As he unsheathes his weapon, the woman on the right turns round. Like the other nations, the Japanese laugh off the incident, but it leaves an uneasy feeling. The people on each week's holiday have been carefully matched. But differences are emerging in the way they interact as a group. It's the first time we've met and maybe we've all sort of like gelled and films have been thrown about. If you've got a spare film and it comes about and batteries and everyone's just made friends. I think it's brilliant because the age group is, uh, what is it, youngest 21, oldest, we won't say that because they're the ladies, <laughs> <laughs> but um, we've mixed so well. While the isolated hotel bonds the British together, the Germans are already itching to get out. Was halt ein bisschen blöd ist, dass man von hier aus nirgendwo hinkommen kann, ohne dass jetzt irgendwie von eurer Gruppe jemand dahin startet. Wie ich da gestern reingekommen bin, ich war völlig fasziniert von dem Flair von dem Hotel. Das ist super toll. Aber ich habe auch gesagt, jetzt bin ich zu ruhig. Also ich springe wahrscheinlich schon in zwei Tagen springe ich schon in Karree hier. The Americans are known for the love of their country. After 24 hours away, they're already missing it. No TV, I can live without that, but the radio I miss. I miss yeah. Milwaukee radio. I've never eaten olives for breakfast. <laughs> I didn't like the six foot bed made for the six foot, my frame, six foot four frame. That was a little, <laughs> it a little bit hard to sleep. Surprisingly, the Japanese split into two camps. The girls and boys take up positions at opposite ends of the pool. <laughs> Yeah, 
知ってる顔がいたんで自然にこっちに男の人がそうなんですね。じゃあ初の本だったらカップルができるのかな。<笑>期待してるよ。頑張れ。うわ。どうせ音声。どれ？頑張れ。かんちゃん。わかんないよ。一年後だったら結婚してたりとかする。呼んでね。As lunchtime approaches. The hidden cameras in the dining room prepare to record a deliberate act of bad manners. What you have to do is wait till wait till the lunch queue forms, and then don't run, but just go quietly up to the front. Yes, okay. Right, right to the very front. The stooges have been told to jump the queue to see whether anyone will confront them. Andrea, dressed in yellow, calmly sidles up and barges in. Den Salat habe ich noch nicht. Da stelle ich mich mal vor dem Hören. Du meinst doch nie geht das, ja? Ja. Ich weiß auch, dass du ein Gentleman bist. Ja, okay, Mann. Bjorn backs down, but he is clearly irritated. Das ist immer schön, wenn man eine Frau ist, ne? Ja. Behind him, Fräulein Ingeborg is watching in stony silence. Instead of confronting Andrea, she decides to copy her. And jumps the queue. They told me that I'm not well educated, and that my parents yeah, forgot to educate me. They think that I'm just nasty. I'm just disturbing everybody and looking to uneducated little yes. brat. Jody, in American Week, strides past the queue and heads straight for the food. Shane was, I guess, three, three or four people behind me, and I just kind of like leapt in there and went, "Hey, what did I get there?" And she's like, "You hungry, Jody?" I was like, "Oh no, you know. Oh, sorry. I swear to God, I was just kidding." Excuse me. Are you hungry? Just a little bit. Oh, thank you. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Did I get it all over you? Oh, seriously, I was just curious what kind of soup it was, but he. Oh God. What's your name? I have gotten close with a few people, so I'm starting to feel a little guilty about it. It's just, it's just really hard because you want to you want to tell them, but and I'm worried about actually when they do find out if they'll still be my friends or not. Later in the week, Jody provokes the same group again. The Americans don't get mad; they get even, with a volley of sarcastic remarks. The British, famous for their orderly queues, will be a hard target. Indeed, it's such a daunting prospect. The British actress is getting cold feet. Sorry, but I just—it's really—I'm shaking. Is it right at the very front of the queue? Right at the very front. You're going all the way. Susanna is so wired, she races to the front before the queue was even formed. What? I've got to, I've got to jump that queue again. Once again, she leaves the starting blocks too soon. The Brits end up thinking she has a mad fetish to be first at the trough. For the Japanese, who are polite at all times, to jump a queue would be an extraordinary lapse of manners. One, two, three, or four times I've seen it, but other than that, it's really not happening. Don't need to get up. But the Japanese stooges never falter. Narumi, wearing an orange T-shirt, heads straight for the front. The Japanese boys are so polite; they pass Narumi a plate, rather than sending her to the back of the queue. なんかちょっと視線がね、わっていうのあって、でも入った人、ある男の子の前に入ったら、割と心よく。どうぞっていう感じだったんですよ。それは感じないです。ある部分的に、なんか隣にいた人が黙って口を聞いてくれなかったかなっていうのは
Despite the cold reaction, Narumi was able to push in. But how will Keiichi fare when he tries the same trick? The girls triumph, and Keiichi is sent back where he belongs with his tail between his legs. For the rest of the day, the stooges can stand down as the guests prepare for their first adventure outside the hotel. After lunch, the tourists are released. The only escape from the Sultan Palace is by river. And this afternoon, they're off to a top local attraction, the mud bath. As they get closer, the foul-smelling, sulfurous odors make the prospect seem suddenly less attractive. I'm a plumber and I work with that smell all day, and I'm not going to roll in it. But apart from Les, the rest are soon wallowing in the mud. All for one and one for all. The Brits have become a close-knit gang. Smelly. They're just cocktails. It stinks like sandwiches. Mud lasher. Where is mud lasher? I'm not going to wash tonight. No, keep it on. The Germans are more divided about the wisdom of mud bathing. Let's keep the eye on. <laughs> <laughs> but those that choose to go in do it properly. They make sure they cover every inch of their bodies. <laughs> oh, the mud guards are you might not have to take a shower after. Despite a threatening thunderstorm, the Americans are ready to roll in the muddy waters. I love it. Silver <laughs> yellow hair. It's too cold to hang around in the mud. So the Americans soon retire to the hot tub with their cans of beer. The Japanese relish playing in the mud. They show absolutely no inhibitions, plastering mud on each other and even on total strangers. Thank you. They literally lap it up. <laughs> Each new experience seems to be a complete delight for the Japanese. <laughs> Their enthusiasm for everything is infectious. <laughs> Back at the hotel, a special treat awaits the guests, a gourmet night with bizarre food and vinegared wine. The roast beef's going in the trays now, and uh, the Yorkshire pudding is already. Mehmet, the chef, a local motor mechanic, will honor the groups with his interpretation of their national dish. You can play football with that Yorkshire pudding, I tell you. <laughs> Barbaros, the boss, is worried key ingredients are missing, but that's all part of the plan. The Yorkshire pudding is a roast beef for leaving the kitchen now. The idea is to see whether people will spare the chef's feelings or complain about the bad food and wine. Although clearly not enjoying their Yorkshire pud, most people don't want to risk offending the chef who is hovering in the wings. Well, our chef is asking to me, did you like... Uh, Yes, it was very, very good. Yeah. Beef was gorgeous. This is good. Yeah. How about this Yorkshire pudding? Because first time he tried Yorkshire pudding. No, I liked it. It was very nice. The beef was really tender. The beef was lovely, a little bit tender. The beef was lovely. Yeah. 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 
the Brits are too polite to complain in front of the chef. But perhaps they will be more likely to return the wine, particularly as it's been mixed with vinegar. Les accepts the evil vintage for his table. Carol receives the second bottle. <laughs> Les notices the acid taste, but doesn't seem to trust what his tongue is telling his brain. <laughs> Rather than complain, the Brits find other ways of dealing with the disgusting wine. Les goes back to the beer. The other table decides to drown the taste with soda water. In American Week, the chef prepares a lamb burger, but this quarter pounder has little spring. It's as soggy as a bathroom sponge. I have a frame with a burger in it. <laughs> they can forgive the meat and bread, but a burger's not a burger without other vital ingredients. Mayonnaise or mustard and ketchup for the french fries. It's usually the standard fare for Americans. <laughs> now that's something I collect is mustard. You collect I love mustards? Yeah. Did you ever go to the Mustard Museum in uh, Wisconsin? Oh, uh, you know, I wanted oh, to. Mustards are great. Oh, I love mustards. <laughs> <laughs> this is I really great. want mustard to. All right. All right. Look at this. Finally, the kitchen relents to please for ketchup and mustard. For the Americans, what's on it is more important than what's in it. For Japanese week, Mehmet's pièce de résistance is sushi. The rice is wrapped in damp lettuce leaves. The battered veg is supposed to be tempura. <laughs> the Japanese sees anything that might add flavor the only sachet of soy sauce is in great demand. He needn't worry. The vinegar is on the way. Perhaps Fumio's taste buds will finally be satisfied. After a moment's hesitation, he accepts the bottle. So does Hiroshi. They are clearly not enjoying the wine, but they continue drinking without complaint. <laughs> Perhaps the craving for vinegar on their food is confusing their judgment of the wine. <laughs> For German week, 
Mehmet makes a mean, spicy sausage. Schmeckt gut, aber etwas zu scharf. Etwas zu scharf. Läuft das Bier wieder so. Ja. Alles ist weg. Das ist ja immer das beste Zeichen, <lacht> oder nicht? <lacht> Contrary to stereotype, the Germans don't complain and are generous in praising the chef. But surely the vin au vinegar would ignite the wrath of this great wine-drinking nation. Despite the ascetic aroma, Uta accepts the wine. She will be in trouble with her friends. The noses of her fellow diners are starting to twitch. The waiter is summoned immediately. At last, a bottle of wine is sent back. So what can be concluded from Gourmet Night at the Sultan Palace? Three nationalities realized the wine tasted awful, but drank it anyway. Only the Germans trusted their palates and had enough confidence to send it back. The reaction to the national dish was more complex. The Japanese hated theirs the most, the Germans the least. But one thing they all shared was a concern not to hurt the pride of the chef. It seems the world over, the feelings of the host are more important than the stomachs of the guests. An old lady needs help with a basket. The Japanese chop up some testicles. The Germans start digging for victory. And the hotel hosts a wild toga party.